that promo from World Class Wrestling in Dallas, by the way, where is the wee little fellow when the Fantastics introduced their friend Little John so he could sit next to me at, at, at the tag title match at Texas Stadium? And that's the only part of that whole fucking angle that I goddamn remember fondly because that was a great promo. And they said, well, our friend Little John wants to sit ringside with you. I said, oh, well, where is the wee little fellow? <laughs> and then the seven foot eight sack of shit that the fucking Ken Mantell, the booker, had found comes walking in the goddamn door. And I, they do the slow-mo of my face going like it was a G-force hitting me. And I fainted, and that was that was the end of the entertainment for that because I ended up having to sit next to that fucker. He fucked up the whole finish. Fucked, he, he killed my gimmick, the racket. He killed the Midnight Express off and killed the fucking tag team title and the Fantastics off all by himself, all in one match in front of 25,000 people in Texas Stadium. Because of his height, he got chances everywhere because the AWA tried to do something. And because of his ability, they quickly ended in <laughs> yeah, each and every right. fucking location. <laughs> AWA, world-class Memphis. I think he may have at one point actually been under contract to the WWF. And that says something. If you were so they, bad. They, wouldn't even, they didn't even put him in public. <laughs> yeah, if in the 1980s, the WWF wouldn't use you. That tells you how bad the person was. Uh, can you name two movies that John Harris, Little John, was in? He was in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That's right. That's one. And a, a possibly a movie about his entire family fucking chickens and wherever he came from. I don't know. Blood Circus by Santo Gold. Oh, good Lord. Well, anyway, let's uh, get going. Marlon used to put him in the back of his fucking pickup truck <laughs> on the spot shows in Memphis for the entire four weeks he was there until they couldn't even figure out a way to get anything out of him. But I, I, Eddie Marlon put a bale of hay in the fucking back of his pickup truck and set little john on it and just drive through like the streets of downtown covington tennessee going see the giant tonight high school eight o'clock that's the only way they could sell tickets on that motherfucker and then the people when they saw him they were so offended their feelings were hurt that whatever performance that he tried to put in was so fucking subpar and paltry that they some of them asked for refunds after they, they said he was a giant but he's a shitty giant and so i come in the following saturday night in blytheville and i walk in and in Blythe, that's where Plowboy Frazier knocked himself out walking into the locker room. You heard this story? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in Blythe, Arkansas, you, it's an, it was an old building. I guarantee you Herb Welch was a rookie in this building, right? <laughs> and you go underneath the, the bleacher seats in this, this uh, opening of, that's a hallway that goes underneath the bleachers into this small, tiny locker room. And the opening is about six and a half feet tall and about four feet, maybe wide. And you go down and at the end of it, there's a fucking door and you open the door and basically you're looking at the locker room on the, the heels on the right hand side is like a 10 square foot area where you can get dressed with a bench. And right in front of the door is the toilet sitting on a fucking raised platform about a foot and with stalls be beside it, but no door on it. So you're looking right at the toilet. And then on the left hand side is one shower and a sink. That's the whole fucking heel locker room, right? <laughs> so goddamn Plowboy Frazier following Jimmy Hart in one night. Plowboy is six foot ten. They called him seven feet. And I mentioned, I believe, the opening's only six and a half feet high, right? So he's not paying any attention and he's going, all right, he's the Lone Ranger. So he's got the Lone Ranger mask because he lost the loser leaves. So now he's disguised. Nobody can tell it's Plowboy because he's wearing a Lone Ranger mask. 6'10, 445 pounds. He's fucking walking in. Jimmy Hart's carrying the goddamn six bags and seven canes. He's got three hats on his head and he goes right through the thing with no problem. Plowboy's fucking with the people and didn't look and walked full speed right into the goddamn overhang. Bam! And fucking dropped him. He fell in the entranceway, and he was, because he was almost as big around, wide at least, as the goddamn entrance was, he was knocked out, but nobody, they couldn't get him out. They couldn't get him up. He's like a piece of human cholesterol stuck in this fucking hallway. They're trying to pull him by his feet because they can't walk over him to get his fucking head. And finally, they get him up and around and pull him to his feet where he can get through that fucking door, and he sits there on the bench, and his fucking hands are shaking. He's like, neighbor? I don't think I can work tonight. 